In our last video, we introduced short run aggregate supply. We defined the short run as the period of time over which wages in an economy are fixed or inflexible. In this video, we're going to talk about long run aggregate supply and an alternative theory relating to aggregate supply called the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Let's start by looking at the long run aggregate supply curve. This is sometimes also referred to as the neoclassical or the monetarist view of aggregate supply. Notice that it is vertical at what we call the full employment level of national income. This stands for full employment. Full employment refers to a situation in which nearly everybody who wants a job has a job. The only unemployment that exists in the economy is what we call the natural level of unemployment. It's those people who are just entering the workforce or people who are in between jobs or perhaps people who have lost their jobs due to changes in the structure of the economy such as changes in technology or globalization. The long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at the full employment level of output indicating that no matter what the price level is in the economy, output will be the full employment level. So we can see that at two different price levels, whether there is deflation or inflation, whether prices are low or high, output will equal that full employment level. So the long run aggregate supply depends on what our definition of long run is, of course. In macroeconomics, the long run, and this was hinted at in the previous video, the long run is the period of time over which wages are fully flexible and variable and will adjust to whatever the level of production is in the economy. Workers' wages are fully flexible in the long run. Therefore, if there is a very low level of demand in the economy, wages will be very low and firms will not have to lay workers off as they do in the short run when wages are inflexible or fixed. On the other hand, if demand in the economy is very high and prices are high, wages will adjust to the high price level and the high level of demand and firms will not be able to hire more workers because they'd have to pay those workers so much more. Therefore, no matter what the price level in the economy, wages will be perfectly flexible and adjust to the average price level, allowing firms to produce the same amount of output, that full employment level of output, no matter what the price level is in the economy. Wages will rise if price level rises. Wages will fall if price level falls. The result being that firms will always employ the same number of workers and output will always be the full employment level of output. The long run aggregate supply curve or the neoclassical aggregate supply curve is vertical at the full employment level of output. Wages are fully flexible and there's no reason to lay workers off when price level falls in the economy and there's no reason to go hire more workers when price levels rise in the economy. This is the big difference between that short run aggregate supply curve which was upward sloping showing that firms had an incentive to hire more workers at higher prices or lay off workers at lower prices and the long run aggregate supply curve, which is vertical, showing that firms have no incentive to hire or fire. Output will be the full employment level, no matter what the price level is in the economy. And the level of unemployment will always be equal to what we call the natural rate. There will be more videos on the types of unemployment and the natural rate of unemployment in future lessons. So we're going to look at one alternative perspective on aggregate supply as well. We've looked at the short run aggregate supply curve, which I will add an SRAS to this graph here, just to remind you of what that looked like. The SRAS curve was upward sloping, looking an awful lot like a supply curve from microeconomics. And now we've got this hybrid, this kind of mixed view of aggregate supply known as the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. This model was developed by economist John Maynard Keynes, who observed that during the Great Depression of the 1930s, there was no adjustment of wages following decreases in the price level. So rather than output just returning to its full employment level as the neoclassical model of aggregate supply predicted, when there was a decrease in prices during the Great Depression, and I'm going to put a couple price levels on here. Let's say that this was the level of prices in the United States or in Europe or in any country that experienced the Great Depression. At the original price level of PL1, let's assume that the country was producing at its full employment level. But when prices fell due to decreases in aggregate demand, which we'll talk about in our next video on equilibrium and the ADAS model, when prices fell, rather than output remaining at the full employment level, as, as we see in the neoclassical long and aggregate supply curve, 
there were drastic decreases in the level of output and the level of employment. In other words, there were high levels of unemployment. So as price fell from PL1 to PL2, there was a large decrease in the level of output and the level of employment, and a relatively small decrease in the price level. So why did prices fall by relatively little, but unemployment rose by relatively much? This had to do with what Keynes observed and identified as sticky wages. So this is sometimes called the sticky wage model. Now we defined sticky in the previous video. This is another word for inflexible. So according to the Keynesian view, because wages are sticky, when there is a decrease in prices in the short run, there will be relatively little deflation. Prices will not fall by very much. So we can see a relatively small decrease in prices, but there will be a relatively large decrease in output and in national income and along with that employment. So what does the Keynesian model predict will happen if prices start to rise again and an economy starts to recover and there are increases in aggregate demand? Well, let's have a look. If there were a recovery in this economy, there could be an increase in the price level that's not very high, which would correspond with a relatively large increase in the level of output and employment. So when prices rise, we see a small increase in the price level. So in other words, very little inflation would lead to a large increase in output and employment. The reason for this is that supply is highly elastic below the full employment level. So we can say that there is a highly elastic, this is an elastic supply curve, meaning that producers are relatively responsive to changes in the price level. Recall from microeconomics that elasticity has to do with the responsiveness of producers or consumers to changes in price. If supply is highly elastic, it means that a small increase in the price level will lead to a large increase in the quantity of output supplied. Why is this happening? Well, it has to do with the fact that there is excess, I'm going to call this excess capacity, excess capacity in the economy when an economy is in a recession when the economy is producing below full employment. There are lots of workers out there willing to work for relatively small increases in the wage rate. There's lots of capital and land that is sitting idle during a recession or a depression. Firms can go out and hire new workers. They can acquire new capital and rent more land to produce more goods when an economy is in recession without having to pay higher prices for those resources, without having to raise the wages that they pay, without having to face higher rents from landlords. If there is a lot of excess capacity in the economy, as there would be during a recession like we see here, a decrease in output to a level well below the full employment level, then firms can increase their output without facing higher prices. Therefore, a nation can experience higher levels of output and higher levels of employment without seeing much higher inflation during the recovery phase of a nation's business cycle. But what happens if an economy is already producing at full employment and there is a continued increase in output beyond that full employment level? Well, as you can see, according to the Keynesian perspective of aggregate supply, producing beyond full employment is not possible in the long run because what we will see is that as price levels rise beyond PL1 in this case, let's say we go up to PL3 or PL4, price level 4, we now have an aggregate supply curve that looks an awful lot like the neoclassical long run aggregate supply curve. As prices rise, there is no excess capacity. There's no longer excess capacity in the economy. Further increases in production, therefore, are not possible. We can say this is not possible here because there is simply no more workers, no more land, no more capital to employ. Attempts to increase the level of output beyond YFE will be met only by higher inflation. So we could say that beyond full employment, wages and other costs rise, therefore, only inflation will occur. So we've got two alternative views of aggregate supply from that short run aggregate supply curve we introduced in our last video. The long run neoclassical aggregate supply curve is vertical 
at the full employment level of output. We call that YFE. This is the level of output where nearly everybody who wants a job has a job. The only people who are unemployed are those who are looking for their first jobs or who are in between jobs or perhaps who have lost their jobs due to changes in the structure of the economy. Now, why is LRAS vertical at full employment? It's because wages are perfectly flexible. They're fully flexible. So if there's deflation in the economy, wages will fall, firms will not have to lay workers off, and they can continue to produce the full employment level of output. If prices rise in the economy, wages will adjust immediately, and firms will not be able to hire more workers because they'd have to pay so much more for them. Therefore, they continue to produce the same amount and employ the same number of workers. The alternative to the neoclassical view is the Keynesian view, which says that if there is some deflation in the economy, firms will have to lay workers off because wages are sticky. Therefore, there will be a relatively large decrease in output as a result of a relatively small decrease in the price level. But because of the existence of excess capacity, when an economy starts to recover from a recession, it can enjoy large increases in employment and output with relatively small levels of inflation. However, as we saw, beyond full employment, further increases in output are impossible because wages will adjust upwards if a country tries to produce beyond its full employment level for a sustained period of time. Therefore, the Keynesian aggregate supply curve is vertical beyond full employment, or at full employment, I should say. It's horizontal below full employment. That's this section here. Let me use a highlighter here. So the neoclassical curve is vertical beyond full employment, making increases in output beyond full employment impossible. It's horizontal below full employment because of excess capacity. But as, as a country approaches its full employment level, you can see that it's upward sloping. So let's explain that. In this range right here, okay, there is less excess capacity, less excess capacity. Fewer workers are unemployed. Fewer factories are sitting idle. Less land is sitting unused. Therefore, wages, rents, and interest rates will start to rise, causing some inflation as an economy approaches full employment. So during a recovery, we would expect to see almost no inflation right here, if you look closely, almost no inflation as an economy goes from deep recession towards a mild recession. But as the economy approaches full employment, we would start to see some inflation as costs of production start to rise, resources become scarce once again, and the amount of excess capacity decreases. Beyond full employment, there's no more excess capacity, and further attempts to increase output will only be met by higher inflation. So between this video and the last video, we've defined aggregate supply as the quantity of output that a nation's firms wish to produce at a range of price levels. Then we've looked at different assumptions, such as in the short run when wages are fixed and in the long run when wages are fully flexible and will adjust to whatever the price level is. We've looked at the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, which is kind of a hybrid of that short run upward sloping AS curve and the long run vertical AS curve. Moving forward, we're going to use a combination of our short run aggregate supply curve introduced in the last video and the long run aggregate supply curve introduced in this video. In other words, we'll be looking at this model here on the left. We're going to add an aggregate demand curve to this model and look at how equilibrium output and price level is determined in a nation based on the level of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Here we go. One step